Hello and welcome to the 1212 podcast with me, Sean Haggerty. Before we get into things this week, I just want to give a huge shout out to our sponsors. Lean Supper Club. They are a market leader of ready-made lifestyle food brands. They offer breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks and treats. They're a family-run business providing restaurant quality products all over NA. You can find them in Spar, Eurospar. Dave's currently showing us how he eats his, he eats his mm. Lean Supper Club. Don't eat Lean Supper Club, mate. I'm fat. Spar, Eurospar. Eat Lean Supper Club. They'll help you. Yeah, hey, listen, I'll lean into that and get yeah. it. Yeah, you, you were telling pack. me earlier about you were looking to get into wrestling and stuff. Do you know, they, uh, they'll yeah. cater for all that. Listen, they, they do wrestling training as well as food. Everyone. Everyone. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm all for it. Lean Suplex Club. That's, <laughs> oh, that's what you're thinking of. Superplex. There you go. Yeah. Suplex Kitchen. Imagine you go into that and you're all hey, wee homeless. Come on, he's got to do something. It's all right, it's all right. You're right. homeless and you want the wee fucking minestrone and you get parcel on. <laughs> <laughs> you can find Lean Supper Club in Spar, Euro Spar, Centra, Super Value, Cost Cutters and Vivo Extra. Check them out. They have all their own individual fridges and they are phenomenons. LeanSupperClub.com mm. So let's get into it. My guest this week. If you were to think of one famous person from Hollywood, you'd probably say Tom Hanks, The Rock, Kevin Hart. But if you were to name one famous person from Hollywood, County Down, you'd probably say Jimmy Dornan. Yep. But if you were to name another superstar Mark from Rose. Hollywood, County Down, mm-hmm. McElroy. But if you were to name three, Michael Smiley. But oh, I'm glad you said Smiley. I'm not a different Michael. What the surname begins with this. <laughs> Who? Who? I'm not Gazette. Yeah. Sh- Shoemaker? Yeah. Michael- <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Is Michael Stone from all? <laughs> he's not one of our own. Oh, no. <laughs> he's, uh, but he's a performance artist, isn't he? That's yeah. What, yeah. Is what he? You know. Well, apparently so. <laughs> <laughs> Please Listen, welcome. He might be from here, <laughs> but we'll have him. Please welcome Shane Todd. Thanks for coming around with Cheers. Dan? Applaud. No, and me too. Yeah. See, with Dan here, this is like <laughs> yeah. seeing your teacher outside outside school. Oh, it's weird. You yeah. almost are like, how do I know this guy? You're seeing other yeah. guys. He's in different clothes yeah. and stuff. He's no wearing clothes for a change. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Joining Shane on the podcast this week, this guy is well known as being Shane Todd's mate. He oh, was co-presenter oh, on Radio Ulster's hit series, The Shane Todd Show, and was also one half of Shane Todd's podcast, Boy Town. <laughs> As well as this. <laughs> wait for this one, wait for this one. Here. You're leaving now, wait for this bit. <laughs> Clip it. Dave Elliott, I, oh. I should have said beforehand that I'll, I like to roast my guests as yeah, a bit yeah, of an yeah. intro. Oh, um, well, I was going to say, well... You we're roasted we're yourself doing, doing your intro six times. <laughs> we're, we're all friends here, we're all friends. Yeah, not anymore. Not, not anymore. anymore. How are you? Good, so well, it hurt after that. Yeah, I'm going to get Hollywood's yeah. third most guy, Michael Stone, to come after you now. <laughs> <laughs> you as well? Oh. Yeah, we're good. Up, think up the hoods? Yeah, Collect- good. Collectively good? Yeah, I hope that spills on you. And you're the only guy that's kept the lid that's on. Right. Why are you keeping the lid on? Because you said my lid didn't spill. Was lid. Oh. Yeah. For some reason, we've, mine didn't we've spill. got, like, his is very fancy. We just have straight up black coffee. And he's got, like, oat caramel How come you have both gone for black? For athletes? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I have one oat milk though. Because what what's happened is you're from Lurgan, and you live in Port Down, Craig Allen. Craig Allen. You're from Lurgan. You live in Lurgan. So you Lurgan. have come to Hollywood, and you, this is the only time you can order a drink like that. An oat car. What is it? Oat caramel latte. Yeah. Like if you were in Lurgan, you would be put out. Surely oh, by the yeah. paramilitaries. Yeah, yeah. Um, Not Michael Stone. Michael Stone again. again. Yeah. Michael Smiley. It's Michael <laughs> <Smiley. laughs> <He'd> settled down. <laughs> I mean, Michael Smiley should ding, ding. play Michael Stone in the biopic. The look somewhere. Yeah. Mm, well, that's right. Yeah. Have they ever been seen in the same place? No. Nope. Mm. I mean, imagine we were like, actually, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I hang out a lot. <laughs> my, my 30th. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too old. Uh, yeah, I know I am too. So. <laughs> I was I was getting my take my gilet off because I got fucking raging, but now I'm I'm chilled. It's actually just warm. Sean's from Lurgan. You don't know what a gilet is? No, it's, it's a it's a, a coat without jacket. arms. A coat without arms. Yeah, yeah. Like a family crest. Yeah, it's actually. a coat of arms, isn't it? Yes, it is a coat of arms. Like no actual coat, just. 
Yeah, well, I mean, it's still together. Some like an octopus. With their arms on. Mm. No. So, an interesting world we live in. How are you? So you supposed Good. to be listening to Shane Todd show on Radio Ulster? Do you know what? I didn't know. I have uh, Classic FM in the car. and that's Well, I do Classic FM. Do you actually too. listen to Classic FM? Yeah, I yeah. do sometimes. Not all the time, but definitely sometimes. The the presenters sometimes piss me off a wee bit. They're a wee bit you don't need them. Too, yeah. They're too into give it. me the tunes. Do you yeah, know they're, oh, me the we tunes. know all classic music. It's like you'd Westwood jumping in between all the rap and look what happened. So I thought you yeah. said you'd Westwood in classic <laughs> FM. <laughs> like, what, a, what a launch for the comeback. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, baby! <laughs> it's my man Chopin. <laughs> this is Mozart, baby! <laughs> um, <laughs> I know you're going to dig this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, our radio show, without doubt, what ca- Dan, what camera am I on? Right here? Yeah, or here? Have you not podcasted this before? One? It was, without doubt, the greatest radio show mm-hmm. in the history of BBC Radio Ulster, but just in general. Yeah, I think The so. rave ones? In, in here. The in rave general. one. Yeah. The rave one. The rave. It was also... crap until it was the rave. But <laughs> <laughs> was it? <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad. We never but listened to We it. only started fucking with this guy as well. Through yeah. The, through no the rave coincidence. Show. No. No coincidence. Um, what what happened was it was at the start. I knew you didn't ask. It was the start <laughs> of COVID, and it just felt weird to do like the show we've been doing because we were doing sketches. And <laughs> Hello, Zany and guys. <laughs> Wait, Everybody hey, might die. Before oh. that, it could have been described as can we say any shit. old shit? All right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was literally every. It was sketches, interviews, music. It was all. So over once the place. it was themed, then it was like right. Well, we've got. Well, once we stopped doing like. Comedy. Once we stop characters. doing stuff like Crazy stuff we're characters. supposed to be doing, once we stop doing what we do, yeah, and just play dance music, yeah, it worked. It was just it yeah. felt weird to be do. It. We were basically like looking for escapism ourselves, right. not just for the listeners. And I remember sending an email and go with a track list and going, "Could we play like '90s dance just for one week?" And they said, "Yeah, I wasn't expecting them to." And then the next week it was like, can we do that again? And then it just took off. What actually happened, see the first week we did it, the numbers in the Ulster Hospital reduced by half. The COVID <laughs> the numbers that listen to Radio Ulster. The, the COVID emissions just dropped by half. Yeah. Uh, right, right. And they were like, we don't have a vaccine or a cure yet, but yeah, the what we're thing. saying is maybe Special D might yeah, mm-hmm. and so was COVID. there people, and they were like, "Get him up to ICU," and they were like, "There are no beds," and they're like, "Get him a pair of headphones." Yeah, yeah. get a bit of sash on. Bingo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was it was, it was the <laughs> most fun ever. Like because because it? it was the only it was the only time in the week we were allowed to go and do it because it was BBC, so it's like a public broadcast or whatever. So you, yeah. we had to get special <laughs> forms that let us like drive to Belfast to yeah. do it. So we would be so yeah, getting it. We used to get Nando's takeaway, and yeah. it was like, uh, you were like, remember you were like, just Sammy G. Yeah. Sammy G. Sammy G used to yeah. this up, yeah. Sammy G sounds like a DJ would have yeah. played on the show. Uh, <laughs> but well, well, that was the thing about it. They were like, listen, here's a wee form that if the peelers stop you to be like, hey, yeah. top DJ. Yeah, you know, yeah. like that. Yeah. I've got a public service so, to deliver here. And then after that, they were like, you have to be in separate studios. But when we got there, we were like, doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So we just sat at the opposite. We were the bad the boys, really, yeah. also. Also, can I just say, we the whole way through it. When when everybody and when everybody bar about yourself and about three other people in Northern Ireland were the only ones not listening to it, we were like, I think we'll we'll go to series here because we're only doing like six week runs and mm-hmm. then ten week run, and they're gonna let me know. They said that mm-hmm. to us well, two years ago. Yeah, but coming on to a year and a half, two yeah. years ago, and they're still the same. They haven't let me know yet, so mm. fingers crossed. Is it on iPlayer or Don't BBC know. Sounds or something? Don't know. Should we, they would literally did like I a TV spin off of it. Mm-hmm. Didn't say that either. Sorry. Yeah, and it was it called was The Real Lockdown, the TV, TV show. Yeah, yeah. but uh, it was a, it was a cultural phenomenon, mm-hmm. and, and you mm. you can quote me on that. It's Keep the sort of thing, it. genuinely, that I reckon in probably twenty years time there'll be a Netflix special on. Yep. It. Yeah, it'll be like the guys that cure the country. Yeah. I mean, like you think of history, not just Ireland. COVID. Yeah, divided. We brought everyone together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, mm. I must look out for it. I must, I must try and find it somewhere. It's bound to be on something, isn't it? Some of the shoutouts were crazy. You'd almost yeah, think we made them up. Were they fake? <laughs> were they? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but they're not allowed to do that. No. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. It's it, what's it? Outrage in public decency if you do that. Mm. Yeah. So. <laughs> I know someone that had to record all their radio shows. Like in advance, who was it for the weekend? Mm-hmm. I can't say their name, from, right? From because local uh, get, commercial radio, yeah, yeah, yeah. Q or cool, one of them, right? Yeah, but it's not warm, right? right. Uh-huh. So oh. okay. they recorded all their shows and they had to be live in the studio because of the show went out live. But they pre recorded all their stuff and f- made up fake shout outs and all this here, sure. and then put the show Scumbags. out and then just went and fucking DJed around Belfast. Who's that hurting? Yeah. 
I know, I know, I know, I know. Because at the end of the day, COVID. But if it's yeah. live, people want to phone in and go, will you play this for my mate? Will you play this for somebody's birthday? Whereas they yeah. were just going, Sharon's 26 today, Sharon love. Many happy returns. Big up you yourself, <laughs> Did you, when you were doing like Cool FM and Q and stuff like that, did you ever, are you still mm-hmm. doing that? No. Good. Um, did you ever like fuck anything up really bad when you were doing live radio or was it even live? Um, I went home one night because in Cool FM when I first started on my own, I was doing overnights. What are you laughing at? I just remember I called him a Walt live in the radio. <laughs> <laughs> and we were trying to work out whether that was really bad. Yeah. You called him a Walt? Yeah, yeah threw me off so much. <laughs> See, being a comedian too, they think you're just going to swear and you're just going yeah, to go yeah, hell yeah. for leather. They, yeah. they really think you have no boundaries and you have no professionalism. there's something in your, on your tongue that like the worst of the words, you yeah. just want to just say it and yeah. you need to get past that. Like if I... Like, uh, if you were, to, yeah, yeah, you couldn't use obviously offensive words, so I would have had to say Give things to him live on. Why well, I'd have said things live to you on air, like, oh, Dave, like, instead of a, <laughs> oh, Dave, <laughs> <laughs> instead of like, instead of being a root, you know, yeah. I'd have said, oh, you're like a silly cunt. <laughs> Something like that. You would say yeah. silly, you know, instead uh, of bad words. Yeah. You did a, an interview one night on Blast. So you didn't listen. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is back. He's gone back to the day. <laughs> this is when Dion was on and he was stalker. This before. was, yeah. I think, no, this was when we were together because I think was I was it? with you and I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, whenever we were, me and yeah. were he was just outside. Full on dating. <laughs> and somebody actually said the N word in your yeah, group. Yeah, I mean, Do you remember I that? don't know why or in what context, but. Somebody that was with us? It was. Yeah, it, don't was, say, don't it was a girl in FNT that wasn't Dion. Uh, see, ah, I, I was going to so, say yeah. it was. Somebody well, you've never in FNT. done it to one. Yeah. <laughs> And she may or may not have just, for some reason, prefixed bacon Yeah, with the N-word. Now, I don't know why or what context those two words have ever gone together. Right. Is that what prefix it? means, to go before? Like, yeah, put it, and she just said, I don't know what she was talking about um, or why she said it, yeah. but she said it. And then afterwards, she's like, I don't know what that means or why I said that. I'm like, well, I remember a blast doing a show with Colin and somebody else, and it was going to be a Colin. regular show, Colin Geddes, and it was our... General Butler, and it was our right. first night of the show, and we got sacked. Oh no! Live on air. Oh, where where was and that? Finished the show. Blast. Blast. Why did you get sacked? Oh, just a million fucks. Oh, right. <laughs> I mean, the name of the first show. DJ yeah. Sammy G. A million fucks. A million it fucks. keeps coming up on my Facebook memories that I'm like covering your shows in West Belfast somewhere. What oh, do you Fela call it? Fela FM. Do you, do you remember know? those years see, ago? See the mad oh, thing. Oh, and Akara, welcome to Fela FM. If I was doing, God. if I was doing a million live shows in a row on radio, I wouldn't swear now. Mm. And it wouldn't, it wouldn't even come into my head. Like you said, yeah. Walt, and we were joking. Yeah. But that's like talking to your granny, and then you, so never you, just, you just know you're not going to yeah. talk to her about fingering and things like that. You're just going to go. Do I you mean, know, unless she's got a church, and then you go, oh, "I was church," and she's like, "Oh, fucking Cedric, fired the digits up me in the back row." There you go. Okay, you go. <laughs> All right, let's let's talk about fingering, granny. But unfortunately, my granny's dead, so she can't give me these chats anymore. Mm-hmm. I just go to her gravestone and remind, talk about it. Remember time you're telling me about jaunty. That goes to thumb your hole. Yeah. I was going for a piss this morning, right? And I was thinking the word prima donna, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Can I just say, and I hope you don't get offended by this, you're I, a guy who doesn't know a lot of words. No, I don't. <laughs> like, would have you, you heard struggle me with say a lot the of words? same words over I, and over? I, so many times I've heard you go, well, what's a word for that? And yeah. then, and I then, did it all the time. I remember being on the podcast with you and Diona, and you both were, there was 17 minutes probably of half an hour of you both going, we couldn't what is that? Word. No, <laughs> and she would think of something you would suggest, and it wasn't the right word. Right, so you just probably right. go into it, and I, I don't think you're like I'm not a numbers guy, and I don't think you're a words guy. Which or is numbers. weird because that's my my bread and butter's the English language. It's wordplay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what is your job? I'm wordsmith. <laughs> <laughs> my quill doth drip the words of our the speech of our queen. Our quill smith. <laughs> <laughs> William Wordsworth. Yes, no, he actually is just a wordsmith. But there's himself. times I say words and I'm like, please, nobody pull me on this because I yeah. want to sound smart and think I'm right, right. but I have no idea. But I ain't got to be wrong. Jink, you're trying to overthink the words you're using. Mm. Just use normal, accessible words. I fired someone in email. Accessible me. <laughs> I fired someone in email yesterday. No idea. <laughs> Talking. <laughs> <laughs> I do know what accessible means. I, uh, <laughs> no, here, wait a second. The word prima donna. Yeah. I was you think you played for Argentina? <laughs> <laughs> no, this was before Argentina. It's pre. Uh, but that that's what I was going to get onto. The word prima donna should actually mean the opposite of what it means, do you not think? Because if you think of Madonna, right? Yeah. <laughs> if you think of Madonna, a prima donna is what? Somebody who is up their own hole or is... Yes. Yeah. 
So if you think pre-Madonna, you think of who she was before she was actually Madonna. That's not where the word comes from. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> right. no, no, I don't know if you do but know. Th- no, I do. I think sure. about it. <laughs> so, you're, so I get what you're saying. You're saying if that did apply it's to Madonna. Pre-Madonna, isn't it, it, is the word. But you were saying if it was pre-Madonna. I mean, she's, she's not going to be a brown headed now. Yeah. But maybe when she was because she's off, Madonna. She wasn't. I guess you. So pre-Madonna. Yes. So yeah, a pre-Madonna is like a very pre-OJ. temperamental you know I mean? person. Yes. Pre-OJ is not going to run about. Do you know, he's going to... Well, he was running about. He was an NFL player. Who was? That he was his bread and butter. run about, yeah. Who? OJ Simpson. OJ. Oh, why? He's a bit of crack, wasn't he? He's a boy. In the day. Yeah. Oh, why? Don't mess OJ. I cut you off. Apologise. Yeah, no, what? I was just going to say, I sent an email to somebody yesterday and I meant to use the word malevolent. To describe a, a ghost. Why we wh- why were you emailing in the fifteen hundreds? Yes. <laughs> but I used the word benevolent, <laughs> like the benevolent font. I was like, I met a benevolent spirit, which means just Explain a friendly, a benevolent, like a friendly spirit. So I was like, we came across, <laughs> and and then if I'm qu- quizzed on, I'm gonna be like, yeah, like Casper, yeah, friendly right. ghost. When really I meant something. It's a movie too, isn't it? Malevolent. Uh, and that's Maleficent. <laughs> the, the wee girl. Told you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ever seen Toy Story? No. No, I have. I haven't seen the new ones. I have. Actually. New ones are good. Yeah. Yeah. My daughter watches Toy Story 2, like just. He said he didn't say watch it. it. <laughs> I was going to say it relentlessly, right? She watches it all the time. Right. And that's it. That's. Yeah. She just watches it all the time. She now, does. can you appreciate that? Because um, my son watches. Uh, Men and Motors. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Euro trash, flat out. Bravo. He watches. Um, what do you call it? Um, I watch it every day. Don't say Coco Melon. No, uh, Peppa Pig. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But because there's so many episodes of that, I'm not seeing the same one every day. Mm-hmm. Does it do your head in or are you past that point? I just you know every word. Out? Right. I just know every word. But right. you put on Toy Story 1 and she's all, no, no. Right. After about yeah, a minute yeah, yeah. or two, it's like, this isn't familiar. Yeah. Well, she sits through the whole film. She'll, She'll dip, dip in and out. She'll you dip know, in You know what's good? Dopey show, Bluey. Did you ever watch that? Blue's Clues? Bluey. No, Bluey. Yeah. No. Who's, who's this, Bippy? Blippi. Yeah. Blippi's the guy yeah. who then, he did, didn't he do like some sort of shit videos on YouTube where he was like shit man or something and then they're like, oh, oh he's Blippi. like Nicktoons or something, isn't he? Yeah, but Nick- he was the guy Blippi. that was Blippi was doing these wee, like, wee raps about taking shits on people and all and they're like, Blippi, you can't be <laughs> doing that and he was like shitting on people and all. Because Blippi doesn't look like it's well thought. Blippi looks no. like he's shot it all yeah. himself and he's, yeah. but he's making a killing, like Blippi's coming up. Blippi retired yeah. and there's another Blippi now. That's because he was doing shits and stuff <laughs> on people and they were like, Blippi, this is a problem for kids TV shows, you got to stop Probably. making rap videos about shit and he's like, well, not going to do it Blues poos <laughs> <laughs> One for the kids Yeah but the, the kids shows are, like, I like that I like Vampirina as well These Don't know Disney. her Vampirina's no. good Holly I know that. Dougie uh, Peppa Bing Peter Rabbit Bing. And Thomas Tank Engine And then the stuff he watches Bing What Me? have you done No my son <laughs> Bing Have you ever flop Like what is flop Flop's just this like Transgender bisexual guy Hangs around with Bing Flop yeah Yeah I mean, I don't nothing? think he likes that, Bing. Bing, why did you put your finger in her eye? That's I not true. That's what you were going to say. <laughs> <laughs> and then Bing said, because she loved it, Papa. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think Peppa Pig's a wee cunt? Oh, why? They're all cunts. Mm-mm. She's a bitch. Peppa's My like... attitude softened to them all. Bing, when I first met him, I was like, this guy is insufferable. And I'd like to see his demise. And now I watch Bing and What's I, I, I feel sorry for him. The end. Uh, like, <laughs> is... Demise? <laughs> <laughs> His downfall, Sean. Mm-hmm. Fall down. Which is a condition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. right. Um, but now I like him, and I've, I've sort of come around to them all. You know Not what? I don't like. Jack Pando. Pando, Pando <laughs> is a twat. I <laughs> hate Pando. He just gets in the way, and he... Why is Pando... Do you, what, you, you, don't, you, you watch Pando? Pando sounds like yeah. your dad's mate, doesn't he? Yeah. just sells Get fucking DVDs. gear. And <laughs> I. Pando, why does Pando always take his shorts off? His balls get warm. He's a panda. He's got a big. You did that box. for sure. Yeah. You you were panda as a kid. I got hit by my by my five, my four year old. Should I say because I called her panda because during the summer she was just too hot <laughs> in bed, so she just wore pants and a t shirt. And I was like, "Oh, there's panda," and she's around. Fucking smack me! Don't call me panda. Oh yeah. Like, all right. She doesn't like panda either. Right. <laughs> yeah. Pando's box. But speaking of, of hot balls and all as well, I had I had the. Uh, I had to take my pants out, sleep naked last night because I, my balls were hot. Really? Yeah. They got, I actually had to put some manscape. Ball toner spray on them, try and cool them down. I just could not. I don't think it manscaped. Then. I know. Yeah. I know, but I don't. I'm not off. sponsored by Manscaped anymore. Why not? No. Dirty hairs. I think. Manscaped oh. boxers. What about that? Yeah, nice. Some men the other day. The only got them. I'll be honest with you. The fucking thing doesn't work. The razor. The main thing. The main part of it. You need well, to charge it. You know what the thing about it is? Wireless charging technology. You know what they've done? Do you ever just see things charge? that digress? 
in ability. The, th- the three is a better pube trimmer than the four. The four is a bit nippier. Each of their own. You know? I, mm-hmm. I think they're, they have so many unbelievable products that if you head on <laughs> over there and use a code T with me, you'll get 20% off and free shipping. There you go. But would you do you like a shave pube or do you prefer oh, a yeah, brush? Oh, yeah, you have to. You, you have to. Your own or on people? Like what? What's your preference? Um, well, see, now we're, we're obviously talking about the owner. Do you not know necessarily. I, mean? I can't talk about other girls because I've only Sorry. ever been with the owner. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, of having three kids. But yeah, you bought um, them. You're like Michael Jackson. <laughs> Mate, I. <laughs> <laughs> Spider Man. <laughs> but um, I don't mind so much on a. Mm-hmm. Now, why'd you mention Spider Man there? Because I didn't get that reference. We, we, yeah. Right. Straight into the. Right. Box. Like okay. a grand shack at the weekend there, just lobbing things into the box. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So. Um, Thank you. Don't mind. Don't mind. On myself, though, I like mm-hmm. to keep it clean. Do you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. You get from the from the belly button down. You start to sort of, do you know, like in a Premier League match, the the shades. Mm-hmm. I like to do that where it's like dark and then light and then dark and then light the whole way down like a barcode. My right. fucking body hair distribution so unfair. None of my head, all my face, all my chest and yeah. back, bare legs. <laughs> and would you you wouldn't because I always say mm-hmm. his hair looks brilliant. See from your angle, because he has a great front line. Mm-hmm. But no, it's like Steve McLaren now, mate. It's a uh, but if his hair bobs and he falls, oh my god! Really? But you just can't really ever get to see. It's like the top shelf in Tesco's. Mm-hmm. I'd say they don't even dust that really, mm-hmm. but you yeah. can't see it because you're you know looking up at it. Yeah, but it is what it is. You know, it's life. Like Aaron Butler. Let's talk about Aaron Butler. He always makes fun of me about my balding hair, and I say that's natural. I can't help it. Yep. You know, I can't help that. He's a guy that puts a lot of products in his hair, a lot of like growth things. Well, about fourteen dye, years older than him. What dyes is he, his hair. Twenties. No, he, he's like a freak guy. He's like the same age as me, but he like gets on like he's twelve, which is a problematic in some aspects but he always makes fun of me when he going to shave that and I'm like when you stop dying yours mate you know that's what we're all about that's what it is do you think he dies his oh I, of course he does I've been in his house and I've he's going to hate this so bad I've <laughs> seen like his his shower is just full of hair salvaging products he's got the Alpacin he's got the like duster he's got he's actually got a barber just waits in the shower just at all times he's got a Whereas, duster yeah like a, you know you, apparently you put this dust in your hair the powder and, yeah I use that, but that's not. It's not the uh, no. But this is nitro volume. Yeah. Well, we, I've got dust as well, except my boot polish. I do the David yeah. furnish. I just pop it all on. <laughs> you blackhead? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Schwarzkopf. You know that? Schwarzkopf. Yes. That's blackhead in German. There you go. Oh yeah. Yeah. Learn something new every day, man. Fair enough. That's a make, isn't it? Is mm-hmm. that a make of the her? Yeah, but I just use head and shoulders because I just don't like. I wear black. I use the Alpacin because like. I'm, but I'm getting out in front of it. Yeah, but you know what the problem with Alpacin is? I think it makes your hair go quicker. Because do you ever put an Alpacin in and it feel your hair after? It feels really weird. It doesn't feel like soft and nice. It's like no. it feels like straw. No, not me, bro. You must do yeah. your Alpacin from Blippi. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> or Pando, sir. Yeah, a Pando the bastard. He the Aaron Butler dyes his hair. Just that's the entire that clip there. Just yeah, that's cool. Just want that's it. Let's cut it there. This is what I want to ask you, is, right? Yeah, that's true. He does. Do you ever <laughs> do you ever make a video right for social media and then decide not to put it out? No. You put everything out? 99%. I'm trying to remember. Remember that one you did put that out with the eyes, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, it was the biggest budget video you've ever done. Yeah. Wasn't we actually it? did an Avon sketch that we haven't put out. Um, don't know where you are with that. No, I don't think Get so, because it, it, if it was... I don't know. I, I think I would have hated... I would have known when I was making it, or writing it, that I don't like it. See, that was me yesterday. I spent, not a word of a lie, right, about six hours between filming and editing a video but the more or was it a motion pi- a feature it was a music motion video. picture it was a music yeah. video Michael Bay over here but, <laughs> 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 but pretty much the longer I went on editing it I was like I can't give up now because I've put so much yeah. into this and so many yeah. hours but at the same time will this ever see the light of day I don't know why I would just put it out there and just fucking just be done with it but do you do you find it funny or what you're I saying do, is yeah, the longer you edit, but the longer you edit something, the less you're going to find it funny, because you're seeing the mechanics true, yeah, of yeah, it and you're yeah. seeing it for the fiftieth time. But I think it's because it's a four minute video, and instantly you're like, right, it's too long for Instagram, it's too long for Twitter. You can put it on Facebook, which is where I get the most probably traction anyway. Yeah. But I just don't know if people will hang in there to see the funny side of it. I don't know. I think. If, I, I, would, I always think it? if you find it funny. Uh, basically. Do you know what? I might put it out today and then when people see this tomorrow yeah, yeah, yeah. or at midnight, then they'll know. So Why I s- midnight? That just that's when the podcast comes out. All right, just at midnight. Just midnight. People just ready. <laughs> midnight. Everyone's sitting at midnight. <laughs> 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 Waiting to watch it. Uh, basically, so Diona spent lockdown 
uh, writing a show which is now going out in the Grand Opera House in the next two weeks. Tickets right. are on sale now. Bridesmaids in Northern Ireland. And Aaron Butler dies his hair. Aaron Butler dies his hair. <laughs> and I spent pretty That's much locked title. down. <laughs> That's the title of this episode. And I spent lockdown learning uh, like Punjabi Bangra song from uh, the Guru <laughs> for absolutely no reason. Okay, can I say on this occasion, <laughs> whatever's coming next, <laughs> don't put it out. Don't put it out. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, nah, <laughs> just leave it. I don't know. No, sorry. Go ahead. So go I ahead. start the video and I'm like, here, Joe. This is what the owner did during lockdown, mm. and um, I did this here. But halfway through me talking, it it cuts and it's a full music video of me actually performing that song. Right. Like, so yeah, but there are bits in it that are in like the Indian language or whatever. Oh. But I <laughs> fuck off. Oh no! <laughs> so thanks for tuning into this week's episode. Yeah. Uh, Actually, I have blacked myself up for yeah. the sake of the video. <laughs> <laughs> There's absolutely none of that. Uh, so in good taste. So here's what it boils down to <laughs> for 2022, right? Are you doing the? Are you miming along or yeah, are you yeah, I'm miming? Okay, I haven't done the wee red dot in my head I haven't fucking wrapped a towel around my head well that's right. not authentic fuck that don't put it on so then that's really weird if you're just <laughs> I know just you <laughs> <laughs> so so you're not doing the singing no I'm just I'm pr- I've pretty much just made a music video to a song that already exists right where did you shoot it just on a green screen in my garage right there you go I say just down Titanic Studios <laughs> you used to give them I mean four good. minutes I, the whole the whole video is four minutes right yeah. do you know what I'll not put that. Sorry. Put it out. I I always think if you find a f- if you think it's funny, put it out. Yeah. You know what people who follow you like more than anyone. So if you like it, you know put what it you're out. doing. You're looking at like your podcast stats and you're seeing a lot of listens in India here. I yeah. don't want to need to, <laughs> to get into this. You asked to do the Bangladesh fringe here. Um, <laughs> do you know actually Aaron Butler went to Bikaner in India right. and he he brought his hair dye. <laughs> with <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> but yeah, what I would like to do is, is see that uh, maybe before you put it out show somebody in case they're like maybe that might be problematic yeah yeah. so you usually show the honest some of them and then she's like alright oh, okay and then I put it out and it does really well and I'm like what the fuck do you know do you know what I mean you don't put right. videos out very often so mm, well, is there I, is I there ever an element of that because whenever like I did do a bit in my, my new show about running material past my wife who's a nurse so it's like you take it to heart what she says but then also she's a nurse what does she know is there anything when you will run material by Diona and she'll run bits by you as you're both comedians would you ever go oh it's good if you know in your head you're like oh no or would you just be like it's like the thing of walking off when someone's walking off stage and they've had a bad one mm, yeah. oh man you killed it I don't do that anymore if I know someone hasn't had a good gig because yeah. I, I don't like it being done to me but you yeah. what you do though instead you gotta stop doing is when someone's had a bad gig I, I walk off you need to stop going like this no, I do this. I do this. I I don't. I don't do that. I do this. I go here. Here's how you know you haven't had. A, you haven't had. I don't think you've had a good gig. I go. Do you enjoy it? Yeah, <laughs> that's what I do. Just because. But, that, but that's such a weird question because you can tell I they didn't. I can't think. You of have what fun, to say. did you? Yeah, I got. Yeah. yeah, I've seen lads that come off stage buzzing and mm-hmm. they've they've died on their hole. Yeah, and they're all oh, fuck. I have to do that again, or or yeah. the opposite. Sometimes, and I've done it and seen it done. You can have an unbelievable gig but you come off and you're like oh it was shit mm. and people are like it was genuinely unreal yeah. I just hate someone being like that was class if you didn't you but didn't do well there is that that fine it's, it's different if someone's just well. starting like obviously for example I did my last show there at the Ulster Hall came off wanted to kill myself because I forgot a couple of bits hated it didn't like it the feedback I've got has been better than any other show the amount of people said that's the best I've seen you I'm like but you know, it made me feel better. But in the immediate aftermath, I was annoyed about technical issues. I was annoyed about a couple of wee bits that I forgot, which wouldn't have been a big deal yeah, if it the was, audience don't say that. Yeah, but it would yeah. just annoyed me. And yeah. then I, until the, like the next day, I was like, actually, I'm happy. Well, that's why I had a chat with you the next day about yeah. it, and I was like, I think that's the best I've ever seen you on stage. Yeah. But but you knew I, I didn't say to you after because I knew you were in. Sh- I, I, you probably yeah. didn't want to hear that because you, you wouldn't yeah. have thought I was being. Yeah, because. Serious. Through a wee bit because again I think it was because it was he was going on you know I yeah. was but I brought Catherine I had this like, she, there was a lot of people in the dressing room afterwards and I said to her can I get you privately she's like I was great because if you got her privately yeah. she'd go can I know. get you privately yeah <laughs> just in their fucking the bio <laughs> yeah I mean that's I mean, and yeah again cleaning up the fishermen just trolling in the nets <laughs> can I get you privately <laughs> but I said look Fuck. seriously and she was just like stop being a dickhead it was good and I went okay because she would have gone terrible you know and mm-hmm. although it's nice to have that sometimes you're like well sugarcoat it a bit 
you know, don't tell Maybe. me. But I think that helps. I gigged an hour after the Queen died last week, the week before. And, Dirty bastard. Um, I hated it. I hated every second of mm. it. I just double-guessed everything. No, she did. No, you know who else did? Aaron Butler with her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> came off stage and mm. like everyone who I was speaking to was like oh it was well done I was brilliant was that was great uh, top of the town in Antrim right. and um, that's when I put that video up and then it, did, did you see that video at all no about the where did you put it everywhere I put it everywhere apart from Twitter I don't really use Twitter that much but I put it everywhere else but the bar actually got death threats and I had to take it down or they asked me if I could take it down what would you say now no, I took it down straight away because I'd the be bar like, nah. was losing money and stuff. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And that's what, it's a different thing then, isn't it? Like yeah. normally I would be like, nah, fucking, mm-hmm. this is my video. Yeah. Because it, it, anybody, it's like one of those things where somebody just takes something and just completely rips it out of context. Yeah. And it's like, you know, look at everybody there. Look how they all took it. They mm-hmm. all had a laugh with it. It was mm-hmm. a bit of crack. It was yeah. just, it was just banter. It wasn't even about the Queen. It was just, it was, been. it was a fucking national anthem. Mm-hmm. It's almost joke, do you know what I mean? Yeah. You make the audience think this and you give them See, that. See, this is the problem too, like, because you put so much stuff out, you know, the more people, like, people will see your stuff who maybe wouldn't actually go to see stand up, or, you know, you have the people who like it. Because I speak to my mum this morning, and I was around her house and went in, and she was listening to Nolan, and it was just people just fighting. I was like, why do you listen to that first thing in the morning? Gets you in a bad mood, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. A, and it's like there are people like maybe that go after to get annoyed at stuff and like to get annoyed at stuff. Could add the rave lockdown, sorry. Exactly. Sorry. Imagine you're fucking sticking your muesli down your throat. I know. Listening to wee bit of muesli. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Big muesli. <laughs> yeah. But um, it's just, I think like that, when you put stuff out there, just people love the BJ. But I think part of the issue with that is when people knew where it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. That changes. See the title of the video too. I was like Irish comedian uh, in Protestant bar. Or something. Well, there you go. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, like, I know, I know, I know. But I was trying to get people drawn into the video. It wasn't me going. Now this is a Protestant bar, right? So yeah, yeah. you know, only. But go you did say. Protestant. In a Protestant bar. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Because I... In a Protestant bar, the top of the town. Because <laughs> I made jokes. Things and stuff is going down. <laughs> <laughs> like, would you stop doing that? We're not a Protestant bar. Protestant bar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sometimes I'm better off dead. <laughs> There's a hand in your head. <laughs> <laughs> you know too many of those fucking yeah. lyrics. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we so made some yeah. weird videos when yeah. we walked down, didn't we? Remember the Pet Shop yeah. Boys one, the sand sanitizer? Yeah. We were like, this is the best thing we've yeah. ever done, this is going to blow up. No, it did not. No. Nah. no. Unlike, your, did, did the video do good? I was going to say, unlike the Protestant yeah, yeah. Bar, but then I thought I don't want them to come for me. That anyway. can happen too as well, when you put something out and go, this is this is far, it's really good, and it does nothing, and then vice versa. You yeah. know, it's a bit weird, and mm-hmm. it's maybe just funny for me and some people, and then it does really well. There's, There's no times I've spent... 30 seconds making a video like in mm-hmm. its entirety I've just shot it one take one thought one what? one take oh, I thought you were just trying to balance it out after you said about the person bar <laughs> <laughs> one take <laughs> <laughs> we should uh, speaking of 30 second videos we should shoot that thing um, uh-huh. at, right after this just in the corridor yeah. you know the thing uh, you call me a dick I think so I need to take this call because my house is falling down. Two seconds, guys. I'm sorry about this. Okay. And we've got a guy coming to fix it. All right. Yes. What's that? What's the? Uh, Imagine he never came back. I'm doing you here. What's that thing with a huff and a puff and blow your house down? Three little pigs. Three little pigs. Yeah. That's where Dave lives. Yeah. His house is about to fall bridge. down. Yeah. It's falling down. What they say he's having problems with? There's a leak or something, is there? Yeah. He thinks Russia might be behind it. Yeah. You want you want to ask me anything? You want to? Yeah, yeah. Um, we go back a long way, don't we? Yeah. Like maybe all, like fourteen years. Maybe? The beginning. Yeah. How yeah. long have you been gigging? Fourteen years. Yeah. Fifteen. 15. Years? Have you? 15. You must have started just before me. Yeah. I think the first time we met no. was in the vintage. No, you bar. started before me. I've been gigging fourteen years. I'm near certain. I was eighteen, and I'm thirty-four. Fuck off. Yeah. I was eighteen or nineteen? Black box from my first gig. It, it, it's around 15 years anyway That's but bad. I'm pretty sure you because I remember when I just started and we became friends on Facebook you'd you'd done Edinburgh mm. the year before I started I think right. it's hard to know because like Guys, especially listen, with Covid times or I'm how's sorry, your house it. it's good listen I need to tell a short story I went ghost hunting with Psychic Glenn last week and I sure. disturbed the spirit of Grace Neyland Donnelly Day right and she's been haunting me ever since so since that's happened my dog's escaped 
I saw a cat get run over by a car. Uh, you and, actually seen it? Yeah. Uh, but you don't hear a good story. He was driving. Don't hear a good story. And I know. I was like, what the fuck is that? And it's a pussy. And I was going to say, fuck, fuck, die we here. But um, your Flintstones car with no floor in it. Or what? That was ten out of ten Sorry. weird when you went when you did that. I know. Sometimes he let stuff out. I'm possessed. What I'm saying. Oh but, no. But um, <laughs> I it was good because it was outside of vets. So I drove past and rang the vets. It was a weird thing because the car in front of me. It looked like I saw something either get like flipped by the wheel or I like, jumped from under the car. But either way, or hit by the car. Or something. But then when I drove past, cats make. And scare the human noises. Sean, when he says like, cat, he means asylum like, seeker. Like, I mean, the human noises this cat was making. Like, I drove past and it was like, ah, fucking Balik. It is like, it's weird. This cat's wearing like full human clothes. Yeah. <laughs> I know, it's the shield. And, and I went past, but I rang the vet and I, and I sounded shifty. I'm like, listen, I drove past and I saw a cat may or may not be hit by a car just a wee bit down from outside of your place. And I went, okay, we'll go and look for it. Do you know what house it's outside? And I down by the lights. What lights? Just down the road a bit. And down then, by the lights. And then I phoned them later in the day and they're like, we got the cat. It's broken something, but it's not life threatening. We got its orders oh. and got it back, so it felt good. That's good. But then there was a lake in my house and like dripping through the roof. So like, whole place a nightmare. So that was my wife phoning me to say the the insurance guy was out to just basically like, fix it yourself, mate. So I just needed to hear. Right. He's actually what he's going to do. He's going to raise the house to the ground and build us a new bespoke house right. on, on the ground. So thank you for letting me. Jump out there, sorry for ruining your flow. You talking about when you met? Sounds interesting. Yes. Yeah. Trying to figure out how long we've been doing stand up for and who mm-hmm. started first. I was certain it was time. 14 years. So you, maybe you've been gigging 13 years, 13 and a half. I don't know. No more. Has that's, to be more. That's mad. Because I think I started doing stand up properly after the 2012 fringe. Not properly, right. probably like 2013 or something. That's when me and Diona met. Yeah, I think after I'm when coming, you got home. I'm coming up to 10 years, but I'm not, I haven't done 10 yet. Mm. I've been gigging for years before that, so it, honestly, it's like 14, 15 years. This guy's got a picture in his attic, though, because you look exactly the same to this day. You do. You don't. You started no, off looking like Shaggy out of Scooby Doo yeah. at the beginning, but yeah. you look just mm. the same. Probably a bit more buff around the arms, but more tired. You know, yeah. More than anything, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Are you fed up if you said, hey, we gone, fuck it. I've had enough. <laughs> With life? Yeah, just, <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> just don't get enough sleep. more tired. It sounded like you know, <laughs> Guy's going to just early retire to India. <laughs> <clean up. laughs> At what stage do you think you'll retire? Because do you not feel like doing yeah. stand-up, you, this is you for life now. You, you, you don't you know, leave yeah, it until you die. It's a weird thing, isn't yeah. it? Because it's like you can always find something silly or funny. I don't know. There's always a different world that it you de- move into. It depends. I think there could come a time where you go, I'm not as sharp as I was or I'm forgetting material. Mm-hmm. But then I had Roy Walker on a podcast this week who's 82 <laughs> and sharp as a tack, yeah. doing cruise ships, killing it, still doing shows and just quick with his one-liners but, and remembering all that stuff. I see a lot of stuff too. It's like, the older you get, they, they have things so like they always encourage people to do like crosswords and like wordle and things to keep your mind fresh. Mm-hmm. See with Roy Walker, if he's out learning routines, doing stand up, he's keeping his mind. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. That's probably good for his, yeah. his health as well. And see, whenever I saw him on your podcast, I felt like just joyous because yeah, like, it's yeah. great to see him, you know, because it's someone you grow up with. And you're yep. like, I love that guy. And it was just great to see him <laughs> kicking about. So on, he- on the flip side of that, oh no, I saw. Chris Kamara on oh yeah on uh, Stary of his podcast and that broke my heart. Mm-hmm. God love yeah. my love Cami. Big shout out to Cami. A couple but, of like three in a row. He's mm-hmm. had h- him, Lewis Capaldi, and Mel C there I think, yeah. yes, yesterday. So fucking, I'm gonna listen to all. They three were also all at my thirtieth. Were they? Yeah, with the two <laughs> Michaels. But <laughs> I think someone like like that's an Edinburgh friend show, isn't yes, it? The yeah, two yeah, Michaels. <laughs> <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Improv show. Yeah. <laughs> someone oh. like uh, Roy Walker, like. Will just all feel. I feel like they'll just always be a stand up and yeah. like should just keep going literally until you can't. Whereas you never know. You might get the might get the fifty and go. I'm I'm not. The material's not there. But the you look at like there. like Neil Dugan is one of my favorite stand ups in the local scene, and he's just decided he doesn't want to do it. It's yeah. not. It's just is that him other, done? Just other work and stuff, and mm. he, that he's he'd rather. Do, but he's he was fucking brilliant. Yeah, and I, yeah. and I would love to see him back. Yes, and then on the flip of that, you know Jane Fitzpatrick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I saw him do a gig. Like, I was asked to do this gig. Do you want to do this, like, working men's club? And I went, no, because I've just joined the working men's club because I love working with men. And I want to be able to go there and have pints. You know, so if I go there and eat shit, I can never show my face there. You again. go to the working men's club to have pints? Oh, well, you are. You were in yeah. pink shorts. What are you doing? Yeah, but not when I go to the working men's club. They come straight off. But they pass you around like a plate of biscuits. Yeah, and listen, a bourbon cream. <laughs> and I went in and Jane Fitzpatrick went up. And now, to be fair, there was some... What age would he be? Um, yeah, like he's, he's in his 80s, 80s, but 
There was a guy, the, the, the guy on before. He's watching so. this 59 yeah. raging. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? But there was a... a on his a tablet. tablet. <laughs> <laughs> He's got plenty of tablets at his age. But the, the act before was this guy who was <laughs> just singing the hits of a razor. Just a young guy, just very flamboyant, if you know what I mean, just singing the music of, of Erasure. And these old men were just sitting there. <laughs> and really the so this is what goes on yeah. in the Working so, Men's Club. So then he comes up afterwards, suit, tie, Dickie Bo, the works. Weird that he's wearing a tie and a Dickie Bo. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I suppose it's part of the act he forgets. <laughs> <laughs> but he came up and he just did 40 minutes, sharp as a tack, had everybody waiting on every punchline and I just went like that was the moment to me go fuck you know sometimes when you're new you're coming through you sort of don't see how good some of the more like yeah. older established acts are and I think that's like I was just blown away by him the only thing is though right two points I want to make mm. one is when all those lads started the likes of Gene Fitzpatrick and um, Roy Walker and all those guys they did like gigs in England and here and stuff but what they did was they got to the club and whoever was going on first got to tell all the best jokes because back then it wasn't so much writing material. It mm -hmm. was just gathering loads of jokes that you heard around bars and clubs and whatever. So that's what they did. So in a way, <laughs> not saying I don't have as much respect for them, but back then it Call was... Call them out, Sean. It's your podcast. <laughs> yeah, get Gene on and have it like out. Get cancelled somehow. <laughs> but honestly, back then, they I don't think they wrote any of their own material. They just gathered all these jokes and they got to the mm. bar first and they were like, I want to go on first. And if you got on first, then you got to tell all the best jokes. It maybe starts as up, but like, no, definitely... honestly, honestly... Yeah, yeah, but what I mean is you maybe you maybe start like that when you're starting stand up and doing the workman's club and that kind of thing. But I don't I I don't know a lot of comedians from my generation, just mm -hmm. a few. But you look at them and go, oh, that's so specific to like you growing up. So it becomes more than a story. Mm -hmm. And like this, uh, the, I, I grew up here. Here's a joke about the neighbors, and I get that that can be universal. But there's it just becomes a way that, uh, the way that you tell it becomes like unique. I think because in terms of your process, what do you guys? do when you're like because obviously you're a one-liner it's a different for like to me i think writing one-liners is it, like you can either do it or you can't like you can come and you can f do a story like and it's how you deliver it and whatever but the one-liner sometimes i like i think i've maybe come up with about two in my entire life mm -hmm. but like in terms of writing do you go like this makes me laugh first and foremost or do you think this would make my yeah, audience so, laugh yeah. what's the i think so yeah i i think i've came away from one-liners a wee bit recently mm -hmm. if you have seen me in the past maybe a year or so I feel like I do more of the instrument stuff now and just mm -hmm. sort of throw in one liners because I feel like there's such a thin line doing like puns and jokes and stuff where mm. it's a, you're either going to be classed as a genius or really fucking shit yeah. I think there's well, good news is such a thin line if people see your stand up and they think you're a genius they can listen to this podcast and realise mm -hmm. not so mm -hmm. yeah you know, exactly. that's the beauty exactly you know? but the same whenever I first saw you I don't know if I kind of just thought you were just so hot, like you were just a good looking guy in a suit telling these really dark jokes. And I was like, this guy was, you blew my mind. Yeah. And it was like, what happened? That might have been the same gig. <laughs> but it's like, was that in Victorious? I don't know, but you just sat and like you were saying these things and there were jokes that you, like, you could get. And then when you thought about it, you got a second laugh. And I was just like, how's he getting away with it? And I know why, cute. The best, the best I've ever seen you on stage, the best I've ever seen him on stage was Ulster Hall last week. You were in yeah. Victorious. Remember that gig around for a while? Was beside that Victoria Square, it was a yeah. bar. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you were in a suit, and you were like deadpan, mm -hmm. and it was it was one, it, and it was all one liners. It was nothing else. And I remember being like, ah, fuck, I have mm -hmm. to, I have to go and do stand up now. After it. Mm -hmm. that's a, that's mad because I always feel like like Colin has said to me a few times before. He was like, you know, I always preferred when you were doing the deadpan stuff, and it, that was when I was probably at my best. But I always feel like with the deadpan stuff. It's that's okay for a certain kind of joke, but if you're mm -hmm. being silly, the deadpan and the straight face doesn't really work. That's mm -hmm. why I incorporate a lot of sort of dark humor. Suppose everybody has yeah. their own taste with yeah. comedy, and if me and him are like, ah, we, I love that. Mm. Well, if you don't like doing that, then you shouldn't be performing that way. You like know? I watched a bit of Patton Oswalt's new special last night, and he does a bit that I, I there are tears run down my face, and I don't think yeah. I've seen a special. On Netflix, certainly in a long while, a, a bit. He's talking me. about finger in your granny. Yeah, <laughs> you know, granny? yeah. He did a bit. He goes, "It's mad as a barn full of clowns' pubes, right?" And I didn't think much about that. But then he was like, "When you think about how mad that is, it's mad." And he, he did about fifteen minutes about like, like how clowns' pubes. He's like, "They're not going to be multi. Like the clowns just painted here. Their pubes are normal." He's like, "Someone would have shaved those and collect them." He's like, "How do you put them in there?" And he's like, "Do you put them in a bag?" And he's like, "But then I was sitting thinking." In my head, like during lockdown, like I don't, 
then there's there's more room for clown's pubes if they're in a bag attached to the ribbon. It's like, then that's not. And it's like, if people see the clown's pubes, it's like, they're not going to believe that's full of clown's pubes. They'll think there's a wall behind that. So you said, when I'm telling you, it's like, and he just did this for 15 minutes. And I swear, I was just, I love I silly crying. stuff. It was so stupid, but it was so funny. I think uh, we're talking about how long we've done it for. It's mad how many, and some people don't, but how many, uh, what would you say, like reincarnations you go to David? Yeah. Mm. Oh, I, that, that's that me stumped too. Like when you watch <laughs> Coronation Street yeah. all over again. Yes. Yeah. It's Speaking Matt. of which, Alfie Moon's come back to these standards. Booyah Is he? Oh, yeah. respect. Which one's that? Uh, Shane, Shane Ritchie. Shane Ritchie. Yeah. It's mad how much you change your style at the start and go through loads of different... Yeah. You try and find yourself, don't you? Goes at it, yeah. yeah. I find some of my old sort of stand-up sheets... And it was all like, you know, my, I tied my wife up and all, and she was all like, you can do whatever you want to me. Yeah. So I was like, okay. So or she says, I remember uh, this joke. do you want to tie me up tonight or something and do whatever you want? So I fucking chained her to the bed and went to the bar. Yeah. But I don't think that's my joke. But I feel like at the start, I just fucking needed something or yeah. anything to kind of go, my stuff isn't good enough. So I need something at the top here that's going to sort of win the crowd over. And I knew, I think, from mm-hmm. fucking hearing that joke somewhere, that I that this is going to work, so that's yeah. what sort of started me, and then from then I think because I lacked a intelligence, <laughs> <laughs> material. <Fucking cunt. laughs> no. uh, you came for my teeth at the start. I've been waiting. <laughs> no uh, <laughs> talent. No confidence. Yes, right. Because I lacked confidence at the start, I was like, I have to do these quick jokes mm-hmm. right. because it's going to be laugh, and then ten seconds later a laugh, ten seconds yeah. later a laugh. Whereas I did three or four minute stories. And there was maybe a laugh at the end, and I just couldn't bear that silence of people oh, really? waiting for me to get to the punchline. So that's yeah. why I started doing one-liners, and then it just yeah. sort of stuck. I was like Eddie, I was like that where, and still am a bit, where I would fill every second. I used to like almost run to the mic, because I didn't like when the applause stopped, and I was like yeah, taking the time. So I, I remember just always being quick, and it was Daniel Sloss. I did a gig with Daniel Sloss when I was just starting, and he was younger than me, and he looked... I looked young and I was young and he was younger again mm-hmm. and looked way younger than he was. So it was like a kid being like, and we were, he was like, uh, you should just relax like, and take your time walking up to the mic because then you won't be relaxed and the audience yeah. won't relax. And I remember after that focusing on that and then doing the Empire once and Jackie said, don't be afraid of the silences because that builds up some of the Silence comedy. Silence is powerful. Yeah. And, and, and th- th- that, well, I was like, oh, that makes way more sense yeah. now. Like, there's Sil- also yeah. sometimes where I do still go too quick. Mm, but silence is one of the most powerful things it's a tool in comedy where yeah. you can use it to your advantage and look That's so much more powerful you. that was one the comedy tool that was one that someone said to me once and as they said to me I heard someone talking about it on a podcast that wasn't said directly to me but it was like <laughs> if you're doing <laughs> material I was Joe Rogan so I mean Joe Rogan told me <laughs> directly that like if you're doing it there's if you're doing a bit and you want people to listen just you can lower your voice a little bit so then they'll Either like if you're in somewhere it's full of fucking cocks like and they just want to wreck the place, it won't. But if they're actually and you slow down a bit and you get a bit quieter, they kinda of come with you and then you hit them with the <laughs> Joe when I did that sort of deadpan stuff back in the day too, I remember doing gigs like mostly around Lurk and I'll be honest, but they were rowdy as fuck. Yeah. And so many comedians were going before me and getting nothing. And then when I got up, I was just deadly silent and then people were all shh, shh like shushing each other, yeah. like wondering what was going to happen. Yeah. And then I'd just go, There's a joke really quietly and then I would get a laugh and then more people would pay attention. Yeah. And then within about a minute I've got the whole audience. Whereas yeah. a lot of other comedians would have struggled because they're doing stories and you have to return Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 See sometimes like I find like if I'm not like if I'm, it's a it's a bad mix. Like if I'm not in the mood, I'm like I can be fucking arse being here, and then you realise the crowd's not listening at all. It's just, you just go up, you just can't switch on. So you know, sometimes it's like you know what, what you try, and then you're like no, it's just not happening tonight, and that's the worst feeling when you're there and you're like yeah. I've an hour, twenty five minutes to do. Like there was a gig we did recently. That you went up and you're like, I hated that. Then you went on. Um, <laughs> There's been a couple of Aaron, <laughs> Aaron Butler went up <laughs> and he went under Protestant time. Bar. He, he had to leave to get home because he had to put a rinse in his hair. And then I went on. So because he had gone under, I just had to do my, like I, would, I wanted to do the stand all 30, which was 13 minutes. But yeah. I ended up having Because your daughter was in bed, so you had no choice. Yeah, like, but fuck you, shit. You can't come and pull me out of this rabbit hole. But do you know me. what? Yeah. I, I, I was speaking to him about that. And I was like, did you did you go like go under a good bit at Stental? He's like, no, if he was doing 30, he's like, I did 20 minutes and it's got like gradually less, <laughs> less <laughs> as it goes on. Yeah, like yeah, he's admitting, he's him, he, he, he'll, minutes, he'll give a wee yeah, bit of leeway on yeah. it. But yeah, that was, I just, because the <laughs> problem was I didn't have my watch on that day. And I'll be honest, 
wasn't having the time of my life. I'm not lying. I was like, I'll stay up here and do. I was like, nah, I'm going to go home. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Dave Elliott. Thank you. Thankfully, the time that I didn't, Sean had prepared some sort of Indian. That <laughs> 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 yeah, stand all worked really well. Because they were like, this is, I see what he's doing here, and it worked really well. That video was longer than your entire fucking set. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I called my daughter. Came on, did five minutes, which is three minutes longer than I did, including my walk on. So it was. It was good like, he says to me, he was MC in at stand hall, and he goes, um, "So my closing bit is, I'll bring my daughter on." And literally, about fucking nine minutes later, his daughter came out, and I says, "Do you want us all?" His daughter's out there now. Like, is this a long bit that he does work? <laughs> and then he was all, thank you very much. Oh, Enjoy the rest of your day. Well, it's funny. Like, whenever, for whatever reason, there's a door uh, to the, the back of the stage, but it's a prop door, so it doesn't close. It's just open the whole time. So when I turned around, I just saw Sean fully playing with his daughter, like, just probably. <laughs> I was like, Sean Haggerty! And I was like, going through the door with my mind. He was looking at me like, oh, for fuck's sake. And he was looking at, like, the T-1000 up to the mic. And be like, oh, this cunt. <laughs> yeah. I was driving home, because I, par- <laughs> I parked right beside the stage. <laughs> so he was still doing my extra 10 minutes. <laughs> Halfway down <laughs> Dave was at home in bed. <laughs> Sean was closing up. Oh, but I've had some traumatic moments. Like, remember, I, I had the poo last to the stand hall, and it was during COVID, and yes. there was no toilet roll. So I'd done this really quick. I, like, when you know when you need to poo real quick, it's like, yeah, i got to poo. It's not going to be a solid poo. It's water, brown water. I went in, there was no there was no toilet roll. And I was like, oh, no, what am I going to do? So I was able to hook out of a bin. So I found a COVID mask, and then I found oh, fuck. <laughs> I wiped it with a disposable COVID mask. And then there was which side, like the side just, people breathe on, yeah, or the other side. I, well, I mean, I think it was in the bin. Them, some essentially got yeah. rimmed by a stranger yeah. in a yeah. service station. But then there was another one with like an American flag, like a permanent one with the American flag and an eagle on it. That I was like, I needed the. So that's I'd an act that. of terrorism, yeah. my friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's treason. But but that was yeah, it was a low moment. So I maybe just had flashbacks of that, and we like, yeah. oh, gosh, it was and you here. fell in the in the toilets, didn't you? Yes, that's what Slipped. it was. I because whenever <laughs> imagine that side. Imagine if the door didn't lock properly and you were a fan of Dave's and near near fucking Draperstown or wherever it was, you walked into the toilets and he's there on the floor, trying to pants around an his American ankles. American flag hanging in Mars <laughs> and an American flag covered in shit hanging out of his arms. But no one had happened because I was in such a rush to get back from the bin to wipe my horse. I miscalculated the landing on the toilet. So my long old man balls had come down and I just hit in the rim of the thing and I sat on my own balls. So I sat on my own balls. and I just Did you win yourself? Off. Oh my God, it was the worst experience uh, of my life. I imagine you burst your balls and I'd come up to you to be like, you need to take me to NA. I've burst my balls. I wouldn't like that. It. it would not have been fun. No. But yeah, once I got out of there, very relieved. I felt good. I was happy. And that was, yeah, a lot of fun. Lads, uh, I could talk to you all day, but we have to wrap things up. Appreciate why? you just coming okay. in um, with another podcast to do now. Who with? Uh, why can you not say? Why can I not say? Mm. Yeah. What do you mean? Like, surely you know who it's with? Yeah. So just tell us. Kieran Franco, Shay. Pete Giffen, Shay. and Sean McElroy. Are they all coming in? No. Yeah, yeah. No, you know what? I like I, those boys. I do want to say that. I was yeah, a wee doing good I, things. I, I a like bunch them. of lads. Good yep. young yep. guys. Yep. Combined. They've got the right attitude. Yeah. yeah. You've got the right attitude, lads. They'll go far. They're out there, they're doing the gigs, Grinding. and you can't beat that no. going out stage time, you know stage what else time, I like? stage time. I like that they've come together as we, as friends. It's not, it's good in comedy to have allyship yep. as well, you know, yep. to work together on things. It's nice to see those guys are going to do well. There was a big rumour that during Boytown, Dave and I were just like putting on a front <laughs> of like being mates to do this podcast for like yeah. four years. Imagine that. But there's one particular guy that was like the original conspiracy theorist. He'd yeah. go, I know. Yeah. You I know, know for a fact these like, guys. These are both from Hollywood and you didn't know each other. No, it's years. true. Yeah. It's true. But contractually, you know. we, we aren't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Remember the one me and Mickey did with you about two or three months ago? The yeah. two with me? Yeah. People were saying on their line, they were all like, there's something like going on between these two like do these not Mickey get on John? in real life yeah, like, yeah yeah what the fuck is he yeah. crack like just yeah. slagging each other that's why but yeah. you don't like no one likes Mickey <laughs> do you like Mickey no no <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for tuning in uh, <laughs> Arn Butler dies as her yes correct Dave doesn't like Mickey <laughs> <laughs> oh, there was too much in that for that to be cool <laughs> <laughs> oh no this has been a lot of fun I've really enjoyed this yeah <laughs> me too uh, yeah cheers for coming in lads appreciate it uh, we'll see you soon yep. yes you will cheers when? sooner than you think when yeah. do you think as soon as we press stop <laughs>